So by now you've definitely heard that you're supposed to be growing and building your email list, right? But if you can't tell me that without a shadow of a doubt, your emails are pulling their weight, doing their job, and helping you build up a sustainable marketing practice in your creative small business, well then what the heck is it all for? Give me a like if you are ready to start taking action and making email marketing one of your most sustainable marketing practices. And let's dig into five tips to getting more people to read your email newsletter. I get asked about it in my DMs, in my inbox, at live events, at conferences, and even from one-on-one -on -one clients. I even asked recently on Instagram and I loved all the comments back. It took me right back to 2017. I can remember exactly where I was, the moment where I realized I was building up everybody else's business as a creative entrepreneur, but I had not committed at all to sending regular content to my own list. I'd built that list up to a thousand and I was still absolutely terrified and sweaty palm to hit send on something every week. And yes, this is coming from someone who had been writing and hitting send on big email marketing campaigns for companies since 2011. I was so stuck, I get it, I've been there, I felt just like some of these comments that came in. In the last three years since I went from that place of having all the head knowledge to actually hitting send on an email every single week, I've brought in more than seven figures in my business. And I know a lot of that is supported by my relationship with my email people. At some point, I had to stop overthinking and just do it, and that's what I want for you too. No matter where you are in your email marketing journey, I hope this is helpful for you, so hit that like button if you're ready to dig in, and also look down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it. That's how you will be first to know when these videos drop every Tuesday, and let's dig in. Number one, have a formula. So this goes out to Stephanie, who commented that she struggles with being relevant, but also mixing that in with good storytelling. Stephanie, this one's for you. This tip is how it takes me about five minutes every single week to structure the content of my newsletter before I write it and send it out. So if you look at anything in copywriting, you know that so much of it is built on tried and true formulas. I teach my students this, I've talked extensively on my channel about this. So today I want to tell you about a copywriting formula that you can use for your newsletters and I've actually never talked about this publicly before. It's called P-A-S-C-A-L, Pascal, yes, like that guy that you studied back in high school. It actually has nothing to do with him except he's French and I like France. So let's go through it. It's gonna kick off with a problem agitation solution. Like I say, that's kind of the little black dress of copywriting. If you wanna hear me dig a little bit more into the P-A-S, framework, then be sure to watch this video where I talk about my Paris copywriting template. But after we present the problem, we poke the bear and agitate it a little, reminding your subscriber, your reader, your client, or your customer that they definitely want this problem solved, then we're going to give them the solution. That is where I want you to share with them a simple tip, a helpful hint, maybe even a piece of encouragement, something that they can tangibly take with them. And here is the kicker. As the very wise, notorious B.I.G. said, more money, more problems. You presented the problem, you agitated it, and you gave them a great solution, but once they install that into their lives, oh no, they may have more problems. Let's look at this in action. So I'm previewing an email. I've actually sent this out and it performed really well. So what I want you to look at is how um, I glide from PAS into the choice that they have, which is C. So uh, the problem basically that we're bringing up, and again, I'm using story as a device to communicate this, is kind of the concept of legacy and what are people saying about you when you're not there. So if you can pause and read this part, this is the problem to live a life like that, right? That is legacy. We're just agitating it. Now, when I say agitating, that's just another way to say we're reminding your reader, your client, your customer what they really, really want. So we're reminding them that they want to live a life like this. And then we're going to come in with a solution, a little snippet, a tidbit that will hopefully help them out, give them some encouragement. So that's why I talk about this. Now, what we want to do then is bring in the choice they have, right? So this is an opportunity they have. As you build your creative business, that quip also serves as a stellar gut check to see if your brand is a true reflection of what you want it to be. And now we're gonna agitate it one more time to this new problem that they have, right? agitating it. What are people saying about you and your business when you're not around? And that is where you wrap things up with a link or a call to action. And boom, then we go into the link. So this is where you push them off to a blog post that you have or a helpful resource that can tell them more. You ask them to hit reply. You send them to your Instagram, wherever it is that you want them to go. You link them to that or just call them to action. So this is P-A-S-C-A-L done very quickly 
right here in these lines. And there you go, P-A-S-C-A-L, Pascal. That can be an email newsletter formula that I would love for you to use. What do you think? Like I said, I've never shared that before. Comment below, tell me what you think. I would love to hear your feedback on that and if you think it'd be something helpful in your creative business. Tip number two, screw the subject line rules. Try what you think will work and build your own best practices based off that. So I was at a conference last week and I heard someone say, I definitely start subject lines with how to, and I'm pretty sure I heard you're never supposed to do that. What the, where did that rule even come from? It's so similar when I've heard people talking about this won't work or that won't work or webinars don't work or challenges don't work. Sometimes I wanna say, well, I'm looking at the data for clients or my own business and I'm seeing things working just fine. So when it comes to the rules or things that you hear are working for subject lines or not, Here's my best advice. As you may have heard me say before, best practices can sometimes be pulled ignorance. I can guarantee you that for every best practice out there, you could find data somewhere that disproves it. That's why for subject lines and otherwise, you need to test things on your audience, okay? Your subject line is the first and sometimes the only thing that your subscribers will read in your whole email. So this can be a very simple thing to tweak that will have more impact on your clicks and your open rates. I could talk endlessly about headlines and email subject lines, but here's the one takeaway tip I want you to use today. Start a swipe file and lean on industries that are very different from your own. Copy and pull different ideas that you can then take and test on your own audience, but again, look to industries that are very different from the niche that you service. That goes with my next tip, number three, start split testing. I got in a question from one follower about consistency versus monotony. I love the way that she phrased that, and here is my answer. Split test everything from the format of your email Email newsletters, also including the subject lines you just swiped, like in step number two. I have found that when I'm creating content, if my emails start to look a little one too much like the other, if it becomes too rote, my readers skip them. Let me give you an example of this. I went through a phase where I labeled in the subject line of my emails weekly dog year, and for a while it upped our open rates and was great. But over time, as I was split testing, I was seeing that the one that said dog year in the subject line was not opened as much, so I dropped it. But this is a simple example of something that I only knew because I split tested. One thing I've loved about tools like ConvertKit and Infusionsoft is the opportunity to split test your subject lines. Here is how you can split test a subject line in ConvertKit. So here I am inside ConvertKit. This is their new editor. Again, this is what I recommend that people start out with. I switched over to ConvertKit when I had 100 people on my list and built it up to around 20,000 before I moved platforms. But what I wanted you to see is specifically this section. So say I want to split test um, emojis and see how those populate. I'm in the broadcast section sending this out. Let's say, let's put it at the beginning. And then I could try to see, you know, does this catch more eyes in inboxes or should I just do this? So we'll send it out to 15% of the entire pool of people that you're trying to send the entire broadcast to. And after four hours, it will pick the winner and send to the rest of the list based off that. You don't even have to do a thing. It does it on its own. The next thing is number four, repurpose your stories. Laura told me that she struggles with coming up with a story to tell. And I also hear all the time, I don't have anything new or worthy to share in an email. Two little tips for you here. The first ninja trick is this. At the end of the day, I try to think of at least one story that happened to me and add it to what I call my story bank. These little stories and anecdotes can be great kickoff points or cautionary tales, but they can be hard to come up with on the spot when you're using that P-A-S-C-A-L formula that I told you so that's why I want you to start banking them. If you want more info on this, I have a full video where I talk all about how to never run out of things to say in your content, and I will link it below so you can watch it. The other little tip for you here, don't be afraid to test a concept on a tool you're more comfortable with, maybe like Instagram. And if that copy does well and is really engaged with, then that may be something that I would look at turning into an email newsletter. I've done this a lot. The fifth tip is make sure you're actually landing in your subscribers' inboxes. No matter how great your content or your copy is, if people aren't reading it, your hard work is going unnoticed. Now, a lot of things affect your email deliverability, but the four most important things that tend to matter time after time are subscriber engagement, limited negative comments, authentication, and content. Let me screen share so I can show you a quick tool for free that I use all the time to test email deliverability. I'm inside Glock apps and you'll just want to create a free account. Like I said, you can do some for free. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And once I'm in, what we want to do is click Start Test, 
and we're gonna go with all of this so I just click next and here is where uh, we need to do a little bit of work so I'm gonna copy this little snippet of code I'm gonna come back over to that email that I was talking to you about that I was setting up inside ConvertKit so let's just say that this had some um, copy in here let's put that placeholder and all I'm gonna do is paste that little snippet of code in now this you're gonna delete this when you send out the true broadcast but this is just for testing purposes the next thing we're gonna do is come back over to Glock apps and copy this list so these are email accounts that it wants you to test it and send it to so I'm going to copy those again come back over to ConvertKit and let's test this by sending it out so I'm going to preview by sending it an email I'm going to delete that and paste that string of all those email addresses that I just copied from over there I'm going to click send preview and then I'm going to go back over to Glock apps after a few minutes and I'll see some reporting so I'm in reports, it's still loading because I just sent that, but the things that I want you to pay attention to over here under content analysis, this is my favorite part. Um, they're all green right now because it's still testing as you can tell, but it's gonna tell you uh, links and images. Usually it will point out if there's no alt text in your images. Spam content is money because it will highlight things, um, especially if you're using words like free and sale and uh, money, things like that, it will probably call out. And so you could work to change those. So you hit less spam filter Filters, um, and then it also gives you some action steps again it's still running so it will report that in just a moment but this tool is a gold mine and I love it so much bonus tip let's talk templates so many people when I put up that Instagram story told me that it was not having a template or not feeling like their template is pretty enough to send out as a thing that's keeping them stuck on email marketing and that does not need to hold you back here's the thing there used to be more of a hard and fast rule that the more stripped down pared down and kind of ugly email than the more chances it had of being put into the right folder in an email service provider. Emails with all the images and the flash tended to go straight to the promotions folder. While parts of that are still true, you may be like me. My audience is visual driven creative and if anything, it just ups the trust factor if I'm able to visually explain things and put imagery in there that they can relate with. It may be the same thing for you. I wouldn't worry too much about a pretty design or even coming up with a template that you're gonna use every single time because like I said, you wanna test it on your audience. One thing I will tell you here though, I learned the hard way, make sure that that first image that you have in your email isn't so big that it covers up most of the space. Remember, a lot of people are reading on mobile these days and so it will help you if you want to use some sort of image header to have more of a shortened image. Now, if you are watching this and excited because you're working really hard to put all your email marketing in place because you have something that you are so excited to launch and get out there in the world, then I have just the free resource for you. It's my launch copy checklist. It's been downloaded more than 4,000 times. All you gotta do is look below to grab the link and you can pop in. You'll see a list of all the things that you need to have planned and drafted as you get ready to roll out your new product or service. I can't wait for you to get your hands on it. If you liked this video and found it helpful, then let me know by hitting that like button and also hit the subscribe button so you can know when the next video comes out. Thank you as always so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.